Hello and welcome to another science vision video. Now I've called this one Valence Electrons Part 2 because you're probably aware there's a part one. In the part one we looked at simple electronic structure and how we can work out the number of valence electrons from position in the periodic table. And in this um video we're in a bit more detail. Let's think just first of all go back to electronic structure. Now this is the traditional diagram of an atom. So you've got electrons in the orbits around the nucleus. The nucleus has got positive protons and you've got neutral neutrons. So you've got electrons here, you've got electrons there. Now it's a very simplified diagram but it'll do just the time being. Now we call these shells. This is the first electron shell here. Now we say it's got the principal quantum number of 1. Now that means a shell has the lowest energy. So all the shells around this nucleus, this first one here, has got the lowest energy. Next one is the second electron shell, funnily enough, we call this the principal quantum number 2. And this means it's a shell which has the next highest energy level. In this case here, it's higher. So that's the lowest energy, then this one. If we had a third one, that would be even higher, and a fourth one, and so on. So, OK, so good so far. Now, this way it starts to get a little bit more complex. Not all electrons in the shell have exactly the same energy. So you've got in this one here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, in this second shell, or second quantum number. Now they may not all have exactly the same energy. What we've got, we've got shells divided into subshells. OK, let's not get too confused here, but we are dividing shells into subshells. And the different shells have different numbers of subshells. So shell 1 has a number, shell 2, and so on. Let's look at how many they've got. So shell 1, this is the innermost one here, lowest energy level. It's only got one subshell, and it's called 1s. And it's got one orbit, you see it there. And there are two electrons in there. Shell 2, that's this one here, now this can have two subshells, 2s or 2p. There are in fact one, there are, there is one 2s subshell, there are three 2p subshells. We'll see the arrangement in just a moment. But each of these contain two, so there's two in there, and there's two in each of those, so 2 times 3 makes 6, plus 2 makes 8, which is exactly right. Here, in shell 3, which is not shown here, but here we've got shell 3. If we had an atom with a third shell, then there are three subshells. 3s, which again only has one orbit. 3p, which, like here, has three orbits. And 3d, now we get a bit more complex. This has five possible orbits. In terms of electrons, there you've got 1 times 2 is 2. Here, you've got 3 times 2 is 6. And here you've got 5 times 2, which is 10. So the maximum we can have in the third shell here is 10 plus 6 plus 2, which is 18. Okay, 18. Right. Let's keep it simple. Let's go back to this one here and look at these subshells. Now, in um, the second shell, okay, we've got s orbital, and it's got two electrons inside it. That's all it can hold. But we also know we've got three p orbitals. Each p orbital is one here, can hold two electrons. There's one p orbital there, and there's one p orbital here. Now they can hold two electrons each, so that's two, four, six, and two makes eight. So in total it can hold eight electrons. S orbitals are the lowest energy levels in the field first. So this diagram here, this energy level here, the round one, would be filled before any of these, I'm quite sure what sort of shape are they? Petal type shape, aren't they, I suppose? Okay, so the round ones get filled before these p orbitals. So s and p orbitals, two electrons in each, so that's two, four, six, eight, eight electrons in total. Now, a bit fancy this diagram, there is a simpler way of showing that as follows. Little boxes, we like little boxes. This shows you the box in terms of increasing energy level, so one in shell one you've got an s subshell and that's got lower energy than shell two subshell s which is lower energy than p lower energy than three s which is lower energy than three p and so on 
Okay, so increasing there. Let's look at a few examples of atoms. Lithium. Now, first of all, lithium's got three, one, two, three electrons. So we start with the lowest energy level here. So the first one's going here. Here's the first two electrons. Now, the thing about electrons is electrons have a certain spin. And if one electron is spinning in this direction, the other electron will spin in that direction there. Okay? Each of the arrows represents one electron. The up and down arrows represent electrons spinning in opposite directions. Two electrons can only occupy the same orbital if they have opposite spin. Wow, this is a bit complex. If you're not quite sure what I've just said, pause it, go back and re-listen. Let's look at an example. Boron. Now, boron has got five electrons, so one, two in the first energy level, two at the next energy level, and one goes in the subshell here. Another one. Now, this is where it starts getting, did I say complex, complicated? No, you can cope with this. This has got two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons. Two there, two there. Now, look, when they go into the two Ps, they occupy the subshells singly first of all. They choose to be single first of all. Only when all three are occupied will they go back and start occupying these. And let's see this one here. Ah, this is fluorine. Fluorine has got nine electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. You can see here how these two P subshells are now filling up. Uh, another example. Aluminium. Now we're getting into the third shell. Okay, and aluminium's got, is it, 1, 2, 13 electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Now, 3P has got a higher energy level than any of these here. Wow. Okay. Now, we can show notation of these a bit more simply. It may look a bit complex, but it's not. The one there refers to the overall energy level or quantum number. So this is the first quantum here. This is a subshell and that's how many electrons are in it. So here we've got two electrons in the first subshell of the first quantum number. Here we've got the second shell or second energy level. Again the subshell with two electrons. This is again the second shell, the second quantum number, but this time looking at the P subshells Remember the three of them, they're all full, so there are six here. Make sure you understand what this actually means. Let's look at a few more examples. Here we've got aluminium. Now aluminium has got one S two. There we go. Two S two. Two P one, two, three, four, five, six. Three S two. There we go. And three P one. So can you see that? Now as you get bigger and bigger and bigger, it gets harder to keep writing out all these annotations here. So, what we can do, we can shorten those configurations. So look, shall we? This is an old friend of ours, argon. Now, argon is one of the inert gases, and it's got a full outer shell. In this case, it's got eight. So it goes one, two, three, four, and so on. So you can see here, all of the suborbitals are full. And we show this as argon, the symbol there, AR, with square brackets around it. If you see this, it means it's this, it's this here configuration, that configuration. So, if we have anything on the outside here, anything further, we simply keep that and show the out ones only. Let's see an example, shall we? Let's think about calcium. Now, calcium has got two in the 4s level here. See in there? 4s level? So, we simply have the configuration for argon, remember, which was this bit let's go if I can get a little pen be excited, wouldn't it? A little pen. So a little pen. Um felt it pen. This is exciting. Now if I take these here, this here is the configuration for argon as shown by that bracket there. Okay. And all we're doing here is adding the next shell there for our extra two electrons. Let's go back to where we were with our pointer, shall we? Let's just go there, as point option. I'm going to go back to my pointer. Okay, exciting to do that, wasn't it? Right, now, 
Let's look at what's called an energy level diagram. So this again, this is the energy level here. So calcium, we know calcium's at top number 20. Therefore, oh, we know this, this is, this is easy, I can do this bit. It's got 20 electrons. Let's see how it fills up. The first subshell has the lowest energy, so it fills first. And then we go, second subshell, two Ps, three Ss, three Ps, four Ss. Just a minute, that's a third shell. Why doesn't that fill here? before the four S's. Well, this diagram says it all. The 4S subshell has a lower energy level than the 3D subshell. 3D subshell has got a higher energy level. And you know the golden rule, you fill the lower energy levels first. So these get filled first, then we'll go up there. So 4S subshell has a lower energy level than the 3D subshell, even though its principal number is bigger. This means that 4S subshell fills up first, as we can see there. Right, again, if you don't understand it, pause it, have a thing. I'm sure you can do it. Lastly, let's look now at the periodic table. Elements can be classified as S block, which are these here. Okay, P block, these job is over here. Or D block, these here. Depending on where they are in the periodic table and which subshell their outer electrons are in. So these the subshell here is the 3D. That's with the outermost energy level, outermost subshell, 3D, 4D, and so on. The S block elements, that's these here, let's ignore helium for now. These two here have one or two outer shell electrons. Electrons are easily lost to form positive ions with inert gas configuration. So sodium is 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S1. Now, sodium is dead keen to lose this one, and if it does so, it gains a positive charge. And there we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, which, funnily enough, is the same configuration as neon over here, atomic number 10. We can also say elements in groups 5, 6, and 7, that's the p block job is over here, can gain 1, 2, or 3 electrons to form negative ions with inert gas configuration. So oxygen, which is over here, has got 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Now, to fill this sublevel here, it needs two more, doesn't it? Make six. And if it gains two electrons, as it does here, it gains two negative charges. The so iron is O2 minus. Now, group 4 to 7, they can also share electrons to form covalent bonds. And lastly, over here, these are our old friends, the inert gases, group 0 or group 8. They're full. They got completely filled S and P subshells. They don't bother to gain, lose, or share electrons, they make, that makes them really, really inert. They don't react because their outermost subshell is full. They don't need to react. Right, that's it. All done. Hope you understand. If not, go back, pause, have a look, make notes, use other resources. Thanks for visiting. Now, if you want to look at the complete biology and chemistry course I produce, and it is complete, just go to my site here, www igcsescienceCourses.com, and there you can subscribe to the complete courses. Phew. Thank you for listening, thank you for watching, and I'll be back with you again very soon. Bye-bye for now.